Disclaimer, as of the making of this video, Allen has not gotten back to me on my request to send products or help me out with this review in any way. So I have purchased this system by myself and either way it would be an independent review. So it is what it is guys. It's just another piece of gear that Gary has bought himself for the channel. All right, guys, look what came in. It's our Olin phone system for the scope. So what did we get for $230 Canadian? Oh, wait, scratch that. Delivery guys nailed me for another 40 bucks in taxes. Well, $30 in taxes and $10 service charge. Again. So you get a really bulky case that nobody is going to leave their phone in all the time, but it's magnetic and it's proprietary to whatever phone you tell them. So this is for the uh, Samsung S23 Ultra, okay? And then you essentially get a magnetic collar which is gonna go on the spotting scope itself. And you get a magnetic lens cap. And I believe there's a lanyard in here in the bottom. Yes, there is right here. Okay, so I've now put the phone in the case and then we should be able to just. Nope. Ha. And we should be able to. Okay, so I had the eye relief out. All right, let's try that again. All right. So you do get that little bit of vignetting unless you, until you zoom in like 1.2 times on the phone. I wasn't thinking guys, when I ordered this, and I may still order another one, I'm, I'm trying to get all in to support the channel by giving us stuff so that when we do these reviews, you know, give me the free product, we'll try it, we'll review it. I'm sure it's awesome. From what I can tell right there, guys, it clicks on and it's in the right position right away. No fiddling, no mess, nothing. Like I say, you just have to make sure your eye relief is turned all the way in and it works. What I should have done was ordered a case for the S20 phone and done our digiscoping with the S20 instead of my S23, then I wouldn't have to be switching my case all the time because there's no way I'm going to use this case with a you know, half an inch of a magnet sticking out the side of it. It's already, you know, the case is big enough that you, to stick in your pocket with a, an extra piece sticking out the side of it, no, no, it's not gonna happen. So I really do like this, guys, the magnetic cap here, and I attached it directly to my case, right? <laughs> you can't beat that, that's freaking awesome. Give it a little twist and it comes right off. You can't pull it off, you gotta twist it off. Alright guys, I am loving how quick the phone attaches to the scope and I'm zoomed in uh, 60 times out to my little apple tree there and take a look at this guys, I just whoop and it's gonna... You're right there, no adjustments needed and we are recording in 4K. I can actually see uh, the bumblebees working those blossoms out there. And we are probably a hundred meters away, maybe a little more.
Oh guys, I can tell you I'm really liking this all-in system for carrying it. Um, you know, it's just the scope. All we've got on there is a lens cap and my phone. There's nothing else to this system and we're ready to grab 4K video with a 60 times zoom. I'm freaking loving it. And as I showed you guys, it's, it's just a matter of clicking the phone up there close and it snaps on into the right place. So absolutely for 4K video, this is the system to use. It's fantastic. Okay, so there is one drawback that I did just discover, and that is when my phone is in this all-in case, it covers all of my lenses except for the basic lens. So I'm tr I tried to flip you guys around and film some ultra-wide stuff, me walking through the bush. I can't do that when it's in this phone case. So that's a little bit of a, a drawback. But I can flip you around and do normal. 20 millimeter, uh, I guess the Samsung is 24 millimeters. So we can do that. I just can't do ultra wide and I can't zoom you in. There you go, you're on ultra wide and the case is covering that lens. That's poopy. So for me, as a blogger, YouTube guy, two phones is the way to go, right? Uh, I think I'm gonna get a case for the S20 to use on the scope, and then my regular phone will be filming all of the back and forth between me and you guys. And that way, I don't have to worry. If I wanna zoom in on something or go ultra wide, I can still do that. And I carry two phones all the time, but for the average Joe who's not gonna do that, and he's got this phone in his case ready to just scope with it, it's a limitation, so be aware. What a beautiful day out here. There isn't much else to say about this system. Uh, it's just a case and a magnetic cap, and that's all it is, and it clicks you into the right place. There's no messing around with it. It's freaking awesome. However, I will say that the value proposition for me is it's pretty darn expensive. Uh, all told, it ended up costing me about $270 for this case and the magnetic connector, uh, and of course, the, the cap that goes on as well. So. Uh, it's a pretty expensive proposition, guys. Um, I think if it was about half price, I would feel a little bit better about that. But for the average guy who's, you know, just looking to scope and get some video, is it worth almost $300 Canadian? I don't know. For a guy like me who's doing YouTube stuff and we're going to use it all the time, yes, I can justify and bury that cost in my spending for the channel. But um, if it was just doing it for me to get some footage from hunts and things like that, that's pretty expensive. Then again, like anything photographic, if these guys have $3,000 plus to spend on a scope, do they really care about another $270 for the all-in system? Probably not. So we've actually got a couple of ducks out there, 300 plus meters. I can't even see them with my eye. I found them by moving the scope along the shoreline until I saw movement. I mean, that's pretty fantastic. Look what I found hiding out there, 300 meters across the pond.
Okay, I don't even know what kind of duck that is, a brown head with a blue stripe. Uh, I'm not a duck guy, I'll have to look that up. I zoomed way in with the phone, so I don't even know. Probably another four times zoom. And the atmospheric distortion is pretty thick. There's heat waves, it's, it, that's what's distorting. It's not the lens. So if we had a nice cool evening, we would have got a nice crisp sharp picture there. But that's just heat on the pond today. That's part of the deal you get when you're digiscoping stuff from far away. Ah, mosquitoes. So many mosquitoes. They've already got me. Black flies too. Okay, couple issues. Uh, I don't think it's big, but your camera automatically has a setting turned on called Scene Optimizer. And what it does is it tries to pick the best settings for the camera. So I switched to the photo mode on my phone and that scene optimizer was on and it put the camera in night mode because we have such a lack of light when we're attached to the scope. The screen would go black and I couldn't see anything. So you have to turn off scene optimizer. Then when you're in photo mode and you attach the phone, you get a huge vignette. Okay. I took a photo of that. So we could, you guys will see it, but I also want to see how big of an image, how many megapixels do we get if I just crop that inside circle, okay? So we'll check that out and see how many megapixels we can get. Remember, the camera on my phone is 50 megapixels, but we're going to lose that outside black area now, okay? So it should still be decent. Then I also zoom the camera in to 1.5 times. That gets rid of the vignette. So I took a photo with that as well, just to see what kind of quality are we getting. We'll check both of those out on the computer. Okay, here are the two images we took with our Samsung S23 Ultra set to 50 megapixels. If we just stick the all-in system up to the scope at 25 times magnification, this is the view you get. Quite a bit of vignetting. So if we take our phone and we zoom in 1.6 times, we can get rid of the vignetting. So both of these images are the same size, 50 megapixels. So what we need to look at is the quality as good when we're zoomed in on the phone as it is when we're not. So let's just take a closer look. We'll zoom into 100% pixel peeping view. Okay, and this is what we get. And I focused on this tree right here, so I want to take a look at the, the, the bark. Now that tree was out there probably 80 yards away, so quite a ways away. And we can see a ton of detail in that tree. So nothing wrong with that image without the zoom. Let's take a look with the 1.6 times zoom. Let's go in 100%. Okay. 80 yards. Yeah, we can still see a lot of detail in that bark. Now, guys, it's a hot, sunny day out there. It's 25 degrees Celsius. So we're going to get heat waves and things. If I did a little video clip for you guys, we'll actually see atmospheric distortion. So the camera is doing an excellent job. What I wanted to do also was crop this image, guys. If we crop it, how many megapixels can we keep? Okay, if this is the size that we want, and we want to get rid of all the vignette without zooming in on our phone. Right, something like, something like that is as big as we can get, okay? How big is that image? Well, if we go here, it will tell us exactly how many megapixels this image is cropped. 17 megapixels, so still tons of megapixels to work with if you were to take uh, an image you know on your scope like this and just crop the center bit you you can do that and still end up with 17 megapixels or you can just zoom in on your phone a little bit and it seems to be pretty good quality even when we zoomed in and retain a full 50 megapixel image okay so those are your two options guys